Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with MysticGenMara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And today, I want to do a little book review for you guys. Um, it's actually one of the first books that I read by this author many, many moons ago. <laughs> and it's called The Truth About Witchcraft Today. Um, and if you can tell the cover, very ordinary looking person, there's nothing... <laughs> exotic about them and it's written by a gentleman named Scott Cunningham I've talked about him multiple times before he is according to Llewellyn's biography here he's the author of more than 50 books fiction and nonfiction a um, couple of his other books there and he was greatly respected and one of the most influential members of the modern craft he passed away back in the 90s um, but he left one heck of a mark on the metaphysical community. The reason I'm talking about this one is there's a lot of um, <laughs> people that I've talked about that were Wicca uh, founders, people who came out of other lodges developing Wicca, Gerald Gardner, Alex Sanders, um, the whole line there. Uh, we've also talked about several other Wiccan books, but one of the more modern influences, and he comes from a Gardenian line. But he helped, there's him and one other author, Silver Ravenwolf, who had, of, to me, helped bring the solitary practice, keeping this sacred, but also breaking down some of the complexity so you can understand it better. But with this particular book, it was originally published um, as just a small track, like 90 pages or something. This particular edition that I have is like 190, 180, 184 pages. And then there's the current one, which is 208. They've expanded from a lot of his notes and other works. But this one is nice because it gives you the basics. It also kind of, if you are new to the craft and you're trying to understand how to discuss this with other people, Scott does a really amazing job in this book, breaking that down so that you can have that conversation without it being too awkward or frustrating. Uh, he breaks it down in the table of contents into folk magic, which is the concepts behind the magic part of Wicca, because that's just only one part of that. Part two is the more religious aspect of it, and part three is you're getting into what's the purpose of this? Why are we even doing this? Why do people want to go an alternative religious route? Because, you know, you've got all these denominations within Christianity, Judaism, um, even in the East, you have Taoism and Buddhism and all of those. Why this path? And that's what the summary is about, is just helping you understand why you're doing this. Uh, in the part one, he talks about the magic of the people, the basics of spells, tools of power. The concept, and I've talked about this in another video about Wicca, the Wiccan Read. And he titles this section called Harm None. It all goes back to the whole concept, the core premise of this spiritual practice is you're not harming other people. And there were people that came later, that after Gardner's line, that decided that that was a good thing. We could curse people. That's not genuine, going back to the core concepts, that's not Wicca. Now, if you want to invite karma to address a balance, that's a little different but the action of doing harm to another person basically goes against the cores of a lot of the um, ori origins, I should say, of Wicca and modern day witchcraft. Uh, the different forms of magic, candle magic, um, that's the most common one, sorry, my brain just totally checked out. <laughs> but uh, candle magic, herb magic, uh, pillow magic, dream magic, all these different kinds. He gives you a general overview of them. It's not super intense. Uh, and then he gives some basic rituals, which are on... Let's just take a peek at some of our rituals here. I had bookmarks in it, and I dropped the book, so that's where that went. There's stuff for um, love magic, different petals, and he goes through and describes... You don't have to have a bunch of tools and a bunch of space. You can literally do this stuff sitting on the edge of your bed. It's the intention behind it, and it's the focus of the person. So he breaks this down like um, different money spells, 
but it's only a coupled examples it's more of this isn't exotic this isn't complicated it's made the rituals are made to help us understand the deeper concepts but it's not meant to take away from the depth of the simplicity or the not the depth that takes away from the simplicity of it uh, when you get into the actual wicca he goes through as i've talked about before the religion part of it then he breaks it down to the goddess and the god the divine aspects of wicca and witchcraft which I feel like it's been lost in modern times with at least the public versions. There's still a lot of people who talk about it, but it's the practice of really tapping into that core aspect of the divine masculine, divine feminine, those energies, what they actually mean, how they manifest within a circle. There's been a lot of that stuff that's not as clear cut as it could be, and he breaks it down and makes it simple to understand. So you're like, oh, that's why. <laughs> uh, he gives a basics of initiation, what's the purpose of an initiation, how to do one on a solo thing, because you can actually do that. It's a little complicated, takes a little bit more practice, but it's 100% accessible. Breaks down the different variations of traditions, as I've talked about various times on here. Goes through the ritual tools. Ritual tools are different from magical tools. They can be used the same, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but when you're talking just people who do the ritual part, it's like the incense, it's the chalice, it's the athame, it's the wand, it's the pantacle. It's, those are your basics for the religion side. You can use them for the other, but you know it's just like if you go to a very, very old school um, Orthodox church or a Catholic church, you have the censers, you have the big altar up front, you've got, you know, they have their tools too. Don't, don't think that this is just Wicca. <laughs> uh, he breaks down the concepts behind circles and altars goes a little bit on how to develop your own practice gives you a basic of them um, the days of power which is what I try to do with my channel is bring back the Sabbaths the Sabbaths the Sabbaths not so much because those are your moon rituals but the base Sabbaths the base eight holidays of the year he goes through those and gives generals um, and then there is a difference between witchcraft magic and Wicca magic and he kind of breaks those down so you can understand it. Um, different things that could come up, dangers and troubles. Sometimes it's uh, joining a group that is not grounded, and that's a risk. Also, when it's solo, not allowing your ego to get in the way, he talks about some of that stuff. Um, he has a chapter in here, because as I talked about with Gerald Gardner, Gerald is all about not wearing clothes. <laughs> and certain amorous activities were very uh, accepted, and that's fine. But he talks about what those can actually, how that implies in today's world. Uh, Scott had some, his, had, had some things happen with his own life with this that led to, I believe that led to him not living as long as he could have. But... It, that's one of the reasons he talks about it in here is just kind of giving you an idea there are ways to do this safely and then there's ways that eh, not so great so it's a good grounded foundation to start with uh, and then he goes through a Wiccan ritual um, which in this particular version is on 139 the new version could be on a different page and it's you're just basically working through a I think he has it for Maybon yeah that's what it is Maybon and he talks about the autumn equinox what it means different ways to do chanting um, talking to the god and goddess um, ways to give offerings to worship but also help you train your mind body and spirit to these cycles of life and nature which is really what we're talking about when we talk about Wicca and the old religions it's getting back in a connection into a flow with the natural world Christianity had that but it's been lost over time because oh that's beneath it's not really you're still tied into there's times to plant and harvest there's times to rise there's time to sleep there's times to laugh and cry they talk about it throughout the Bible but in the modern Christian movement, they've gotten to a point where, ew, we don't, we don't believe in that cycle nature thing. You do, you just don't realize it. <laughs> but Wicca goes back to that where it's like, no, no, we actually are part of nature. 
it's more healthy for our mind, it's more healthy for our bodies to eat and practice and live according to the seasons. And so that's what he's doing in here as he goes through a Maybon ritual, talks about some Maybon lore. And then when you get into the summary, this is the part where it's help, why, why we do this. Rising your consciousness, you're walking towards the light, and it allows you, and he gives you the generals, not specifics, because every person's situation is different. He gives you the generals of how to bring this up if someone's like, what do you mean, you're, you're a witch? Ew. Not, no, no, ooh, there's no words here. Um, <laughs> it's about having an open communication, being able to have a dialogue, not allowing emotions to get in the way. Like, well, they called me a name. That's not necessary. There are a lot of the times, especially in this type of work, and this is what he talks about in here a lot. No, not a lot, but he brings it up. <laughs> is just misunderstanding. People not knowing the roots, not knowing what it is that you're actually trying to practice, and not understanding that this is more of a peaceful practice. There are people out there today, and I will not, I'm not naming names because it's not what I do. There are people out there today that make this very structured, very strict. If you don't practice the way I do, it is completely wrong. Calm down there, Cupcake. That's not how we roll. When you look at what the spiritual tradition of Wicca was, and witchcraft going back to Gerald Gardner and Alex Sanders, they came out of very structured uh, lodges and had some very interesting backgrounds, uh, but they were able to change it and bring it to a more personal aspect. We weren't praying to some amorphous deity that doesn't actually know who we are type of belief in a lot of uh, ways. It's bringing it into a personal connection, bringing back the connection to nature. And when he talks about, goes through this book, he talks about that a lot, is this, we are part of nature, connecting back into it, understanding the dynamic balance of the masculine and the feminine, because there is a balance that needs to be maintained for our own bodies to be healthy, but also for the world around us to be healthy. But yeah, if it's, if you're new to it, um, and you're curious to know a little bit more, or maybe find a different way to discuss it with somebody, this is a really good resource if you are if you watched a few videos of mine of other people's and you're like I'm just not sure this is a good way to help you understand a little bit more about it um, the way Scott talks about stuff he's very personable he's very like oh you're sitting on a couch having a cup of coffee and you just happen to bring up the subject and so it's more of a discussion it's not a preachy it's not dictatorial it's very Oh, so you're curious. Well, let's talk about it. And he breaks it down in the way the book is written that way as well. Because most people, when they hear Wicca or witchcraft, it's magic. Yes, you're right. We do. There is a practice of magic. And in here it talks about what we do, why we don't harm other people, the, the tools. It's not a knife to cut anything. And Athame should never actually physically cut anything. Um, that's a whole different story. Anyway, <laughs> but there's ways to discuss it and he make breaks it down so it's easy to understand and it also gives you some tools or skills to be able to have that discussion with other people if that's what you're looking for but um, overall this is a really good book um, the version that is linked in the description if you're interested in it is a more modern version than even this one and when I say modern they just updated the cover oops <laughs> they updated the cover and then um, they've added a few more notes from his own journals, which um, when he passed, Llewellyn had access to. So they've been adding things and kind of f not so much fleshing it out, but filling in spots that may have been missed. It's a really worthwhile text. It's a good read. Um, and even if you're already a practitioner, it's a it's an interesting way to go back through and read it, uh, get a little different perspective sometimes. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the book if you do decide to read it. And Otherwise, I will see you in the future video. Have an awesome rest of your week.